Oh, my weekend was really good. It was super busy. It's always packed training and then running around with my little guy. So I'm always constantly on the go. I'm always doing something. It never ends. Yeah. Life of a pro athlete. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. So one question I'm going to start off with, because Friday was fight night. I have to ask your opinion. I saw some of the videos and you guys were pretty hyped for the fight. Who are you pulling for? Were you going for Honest- the- Honestly, it was it was a really tough match. The UFC fight, I don't think the refs did a very good job on any of the fights. I think that they miscalled a lot of it. Um, obviously, Cowboy Cerrone is a legend. You know, he's he's been around in the sport for a long time. Uh, he's well known. Uh, actually, his um, opponent that he went against, I, I haven't really seen him fight too much. So, uh, for me, obviously, I went for Cowboy, but you know. At the end of the fight, I was just totally, you know, shocked on the ref's decisions in most of the fight. So, definitely was a, a bummer. See how it goes. I mean, I'm fairly newer to MMA, but I've been watching okay. a lot of the fights that have been going on. This past Friday wasn't, wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It didn't live up to the hype, in my opinion. Yeah, most definitely. I think that you have to see better fights for sure. I feel like this was more of like an underguard or underdog uh you know, line up because it was, you know, on ESPN, it wasn't on pay-per-view, you know, the whole thing. So um, I definitely think you should get more into it and watch more UFC fights because that's what got me into jiu-jitsu. Man, I don't know. I mean, they get pretty excited. I'm going to have to definitely get more into it. I'm more of a football guy, so. Okay, okay. No, it's one tonight. That's, that's the biggest thing. I was football happy- Sunday. Right? NFL Sunday. Yeah. I was happy my Seahawks won, but freaking Cowboys. They took, they had to win too. But uh, oh. getting right into uh, some of my questions. Uh, sure. Pretty much, how did you get into the sport of jujitsu? So it was really funny. I was actually in the aerospace industry for like five years. And uh, one of the vendors that came in, he trained at Checkmat Buena Park, which was five minutes up the road from me. And he really encouraged me to try it, but I was really nervous. Um, and he said, well, just bring your son. And so I went and I brought my son and then I stayed for the adult class and they actually had a women's class that day. Um, and the instructor was Patty Fawn. So, uh, I was watching the women's class and I was like, I could do this, you know, that I could easily do this. And I have a lot of aggression too. So I was like, Oh, I could do this for sure. And then the next day I went in and I tried it and that was all she wrote. I was hooked ever since. Okay. Now, um, you were pretty much saying that you're training, but your son's also training as well, right? Yeah, he was actually, he just got into competing recently. Um, at first when he did get into it, he wasn't really, um, too enthusiastic about it. I actually ended up pulling him out. Um, but as I started competing and winning, I think he got like, Oh, my mom's winning all these medals and this is cool. You know, and I get so excited for him. So, he just recently did, uh, before obviously COVID, the two competitions, and he placed third. So he did pretty good for his, you know, yeah. the nervous jitters. Okay. And yeah. how, many, uh, how many belts have you won? Like, what belt are you, on, are you on now? Right now, I'm just a blue belt. So the belt break, it really just depends on your gym. Um, some gyms I do know uh, promote very frequently, like two, three times a year or, you know, every couple months. I feel like when you are training hard to like compete to win and represent your gym, that it is a slower process. I was a white belt for almost two years. Um, and then I just kept winning and winning. And I think my, my professor at the time was like, okay, she's ready for like the next level. So right now I'm just a blue belt. So I have, I have some time to go uh, for sure within the belt ranks. You know, you get all the way up to black belt. So I, I still have a couple more to go. Gotcha. But, I mean, the accomplishments that you've had so far, I mean, we were talking a little bit earlier via text. You were saying that you've had 13 wins throughout the SJJIF? Uh, so, SJJIF, I did. So, there's different divisions, different. Um, there's IBJJF, there's SJJIF. They have a bunch of different divisions. Uh, but the World Championship, I did win the two times in the Gi and then one time in the No Gi. So, that was that was super, you know as an adult, you don't really do too many sports. So, you know, it's rewarding. 
And you're still young too. How old are you? I'm 28. I'll be 29 in January. Very cool. Okay. Um, one of the questions that I had for you, did you have any like drawbacks when you were taking the classes? Like when you were building up to actually competing? Were you nervous? Were you worried about like I might actually get injured or anything like that? I mean, I feel like it is always uh, a possibility, you know, but I feel like you should know your limits. You know, obviously, if you're in a position and you need to tap, it's it's better to be, you know, tap and unfortunately lose your pride a little bit because <laughs> that always happens. But uh, lose your pride a little bit, then break something and be out for longer. You know, it's all it's all a learning curve and a learning lesson for sure. Very true. Um, walk me through how you competed for the SJJIF World Champions. Like, what was, what was your journey getting there? How was it? It was, it was definitely a, it's de like I said, it, it was definitely a long journey uh, from going to the white belt to blue belt. It was, it was a long time coming, you know, doing smaller competitions just to lead up to, you know, you wait a whole year to get to November. It actually would have been this coming November again, too. Unfortunately, <laughs> now we have all this crazy stuff going on, but you wait all year and you train all year, you know, for the bigger competitions. And then, you know, it, it's, it's grueling. It's training six days a week. It's cutting weight. It's maintaining weight. It's, it's, uh, like I said, training six days a week, sometimes twice a day, whether it's a gym or, you know, you're physically rolling on the mat, you know, it, it's, it's definitely grueling. Now piggybacking off of what you just said, um, sure. a lot of competing is basically you have to make the weight. So what's your diet consist of? How many times do you normally eat and uh, what's your caloric intake? So it really just depends on uh, what my prior weight is before the competition. I usually, I usually normally walk around at about 125 to 128, uh, but I cut all the way down to 115 to go into the light feather 120 bracket. So it's not too much. It's, you know, it's anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds, depending on where my weight is at. Uh, but diet wise, I definitely, I just cook a lot of low calorie meals. Um, I cook a lot at home. I'm always meal prepping. I'm always, uh, definitely like making healthier choices, uh, during competition times, but my calorie intake, depending on how much weight I have to lose is usually about 1200 calorie diet a day. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, now, if I have to lose like 12 pounds, it's usually maybe like an 800 calorie, but high protein. So I still have the energy. Uh, but it's, like I said, it's a process, man. It, it's, <laughs> it's always something. It's athletes, man. Yeah, it's, it's always, always something. Training, morning, noon, and night, and everything like that. So yeah. next question. How do you manage the stress? Because basically you're a full-time <laughs> mom with basically, let's be honest, two full-time jobs. So yeah. you have a actual job, which you said you're still in aerospace now, correct? No, I actually left aerospace. I'm, uh, I'm currently an operations manager for a yeah. company. Um, I love doing it. I work full-time. And like you said, I'm a mom full-time. It's not easy. No. I mean, how, how do you juggle everything without like breaking? I guess that's you know, the question. It's funny because Jiu-jitsu, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily like a pro athlete. I do just jiu-jitsu for fun. You know, it's, that's my outlet. That's my, that's my Zen. When I'm, when I'm upset or I'm having a bad day, I go to jiu-jitsu at, at night after I went to work all day and took care of my kid, you know, before all that goes, I go to the gym at four in the morning, you know, so I'm always constantly staying busy, but jiu-jitsu was the one thing that I found that like took out all my stress, all my worries. So even when I'm juggling a lot, if I go to class, I'm just like, I feel so much better. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. It's so crazy how it happens. That's very cool. And it kind of goes hand in hand because stressful day, you have that, you go to practice and you get all that stress out. So it even. Oh, 100%. Very cool. All right. Let's talk music because I'm going to be completely oh. honest. I'm a nerd. When I was going for my football games, I always had something different, whether it was Tupac in my ear, two chains. Uh, okay. Sevenfold, whatever I could get to to hype myself up. So, how do you hype yourself up? What's your What's your playlist? What's your go to playlist? Before well, my playlist is crazy. It's 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 crazy. Even on my regular day basis, it's so up and down. Uh, uh, 
I love though before competitions. I love living like listening to underground rap, yeah. underground hip hop. Uh, it kind of just gets me in the mood. It gets me kind of relaxed. Gets me out of my jitters. Uh, I love Doughboy. <laughs> like, I like a lot of underground hip hop. Uh, Tupac, Biggie, um, you know, Ferricide, all the all the good stuff that you listen to, and it just makes you feel good. I love Too Short, too, even though he's wild. Yeah. You know, I listen to all that good stuff because it makes you feel good, you know. You have to ha be in your vibe. So if you had to give – if you had to pick randomly, let's say, your top three right now, who would be your top three hype-up artists to get you going before a match? I would for sure say – I would say Tupac, Too Short, and Doughboy. Those That's are right. always the three. Yeah, I always listen to them because they're just so hype. They're so, like, they go hard, all of them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing I feel like we didn't really touch up on because I'm new again I'm new to it myself um, yeah. what's like the rules and regulations like what can get you disqualified um, how many ranks are there um, how many places have you been able to travel to yeah, most definitely. So I'm actually going to Texas next month just to go train jiu-jitsu but I've been to like Arizona uh, Nevada. I haven't really went too far out. I was supposed to go to Brazil, but like I said, all this stuff and then go to Hawaii just to train, you know, just to see what training like is like, you know, in other places. Um, but it's, it's definitely a journey, obviously with the ranks and the belts. So you have your white belt, blue, purple, brown, and black. Um, the rule set is all different. It just depends on the competition. You can have a fight like a super fight and there's no rules at all except for you know reaping the knee or or simple simple little things you know but realistically it's all across the board so there's not nothing really specific you know white belts they can't do wrist locks and you know there's just a bunch of different things and every uh, competition is different so do you have a fighter that you model your craft after like what, what's your what's normally what would you say is your fighting style? My fighting style definitely is top game. Um, I've always been a top game player. A lot of pressure, okay. a lot of passing. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it's more of like a wrestling video, style. Those videos that you sent me, especially the very last one, which I think was like 15 seconds, that was probably yeah. the best takedown I've seen in a while. Yeah, most definitely. Like, I love doing takedowns. I, I would say I resemble more of a wrestler type style, uh, top game, but I have been trying to work on my guard. I love the guillotine. I can get the guillotine all day. Uh, at the World Championship on uh, both of my fights, I got the guillotine. So it's, it's always a good thing, like, when you're working on something and then you get it, you know? Yeah, for sure. So. Um. Here's another, this is like an old, old, when you were a child question. Uh, okay. Sports. Did you have like a particular sport that you wanted to play more over the other when you were growing up? It's so funny because everybody always asks me like, what did you do before jujitsu? Like you right. seem really athletic. And, and I'm like, I danced my whole life. I danced hip hop. I danced Tahitian. Uh, I competed heavily in dance. So the MMA, jiu-jitsu, judo, all that stuff was super new to me until I turned like 24 or 25, but I fell in love with it, like I said. Uh, so when I tell people like, oh, I'm a dan I was a dancer before this, and I was super, yeah. I was told it's two different people because inside, I love dancing though. It, it just made me feel good too, like jiu-jitsu, but now it's like, jiu-jitsu is my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's so much fun. It's like I said, it's such an outlet. You have to try it sometime. Yeah, most definitely. It's a healthy outlet too. Uh, oh, it's so remember, healthy. I mean, I'm older now and I'm far removed from the game, but I mean, I love. I always love having conversations with other athletes, whether they're past or present. You know. Uh, yeah. Football was my thing. No matter what was going on in life, I could just put the helmet on, put the pads on, and just go at it. Just go yeah. at it. So I definitely understand, like, it's the best stress reliever. And that's why one of the reasons why just looking at the videos that you've had up, the photos, you were one of those people that was like, man, she's got a lot of good stuff going on. So I, I'm interested to, you know, kind of find out more about your story. Um, yeah. 
talk a little bit more about what you've accomplished in the game so far. You said 13 time uh, champ for uh, yeah. SJIF. Yeah, all different, uh, all different divisions. Like I said, SJJF, NABJJF, um, IBJJF. So there's, like I said, there's tons of different divisions and and uh, competitions. Uh, the Master Worlds. There's there's just so many different competitions. Uh, so 13 wins with them. Um, obviously, you know, people, we have the second and third place, so I have five second place and then uh, one third. So I've competed pretty heavily. I would say probably in the last, what I've been training, or I've been doing jiu-jitsu only two and a half years now. Yeah. Uh, I've probably done about 18 or 19 competitions now. So that's about two a month if right. you think about it, you know? So it's, it's, it's definitely, and I didn't start competing right away. It, I, I started competing probably six months into jiu-jitsu. Uh, I really wanted to try it, and I got, I lost so bad. I, I got held like a little baby, and I was so embarrassed. But you, you overcame it, you grew from it, and you got better. I mean, obviously, the amount of wins that you yeah. had, you get tallying on a lot of wins. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, for sure. After that, I was like, I'm not losing. I, I have to go do this again. And, and right? even when you lose, you just got to keep going. Keep going, right? keep going, keep pushing. Very cool. Okay, so um, how has the virus affected your training? Because from the videos that you posted up, it's not like you guys are wearing, like, masks and gloves or anything like that. Obviously, you can't. But how has it affected it? Honestly, in the beginning of all this, so this all happened in about February, March, it was really scary. None of us were able to train. Um, I was still doing in my house training and I have such a small space. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing kids Zoom classes just to kind of just help out, you know, and, uh, and do what I could for the gym as well, because my professor's done so much for me. Uh, so in the beginning, we didn't have class at all, and it, it, it did affect me. I did know a couple gyms that were doing low-key stuff, you know, because it, it happens, you know. You got to keep training because once all this is over, you know, Tell people you got to find a way to do it. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep on and keeping on. So. restrictions, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a funny world we're living in right now, but uh, it, it's definitely a journey. It's definitely uh, something I, I definitely highly suggest everybody to do. Most definitely. Okay, and the award-winning question. Uh, where do you see yourself in about three to five years in jiu-jitsu? Hopefully, I mean, in five years, I would hope I would be a brown belt by then, reaching my way to the black belt, but it, it takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication and effort, yeah. which I have, I have all that. I mean, ideally, that would be great. Hopefully, in about three years, I'll be in the purple belt level competing and all this will be all over, you know, ideally Most that'd be, Most that would be great. All right. I just got a couple more questions before we wrap it up. Uh, yeah. Like I said earlier, I'm a huge nerd. So of course I'm going to ask off the wall questions just to get your mind thinking. This might not even be a problem because you do have a son and you said, how old is your son? He's seven now. Yeah. Seven. Okay. I thought he was yeah. eight. So he probably would know. Okay. Um, Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter? Street Fighter. Really? Yeah. I thought you were going to say Mortal Kombat. No way. Street it's Fighter. I, I love street fighting. I got into so many fights growing up, and that's why I think I knew like, jiu-jitsu would definitely be good for me because I could legally choke somebody out. <laughs> right. Okay, so who was your favorite character? <clears throat> ah, so you got to think about that one. I'll tell you mine. All right. I love Street Fighter, but I was more so in love with Mortal Kombat. Sub Zero and Scorpion are my, are, those are both my guys. <laughs> I would say, like, I didn't really get into that. So I was, my brother was super into it, but I would say, in general, if I was looking at it now, Street Fighter. But you couldn't even talk to me about anything like that because I wouldn't even know. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> hey, at least I'm honest about it, though. Hey, at least you're honest. <laughs> um, okay systems this is the very last question are you xbox is your son xbox because i actually don't let my son have anything like that <clears throat> uh he does have a nintendo switch but i'm i'm a stickler you know all these kids are just stuck on their phone all day and like their tablets and video games and i'm kind of like a get out there go do your hockey he loves to play hockey too so i'm like go play hockey like 
let's go play some ball. Let's go to the park. Let's do something. You know, I always grew up and I was riding bikes and playing cops and robbers, having water balloon fights, you know, so having him stuck, stuck to a video game. Maybe when he's older. When he's older, I'd say like an Xbox for sure. Okay. How many sports is he doing? So you said hockey. He was, he's training too. What else? Yeah. Any yeah, so funny football he, in his foreseeable future? No, I don't think so. He hasn't really had any desire for football. Um, he wants to be a professional hockey player, and he, he does that a lot. He does that actually more than he does jiu-jitsu. Um, but other than that, um, he's tried soccer. We, I let him pretty much do anything that he wants to do. You know, I, I, I try not to hold him back. Let him try whatever he wants to get into, you know? You got to let kids do whatever they want. Let them choose. I like that. Yeah, you know, 100%. Uh, with the traveling before COVID-19, how was, uh, how was the relationship? Like, it, you don't have a lot of time away from him, basically, right? Yeah, no, I don't. Um, it, with, uh, with everything going on right now, it was definitely hard. It, it puts a lot more pressure on us as parents. Uh, so that has actually affected my training as well, you know, having to be the teacher, be the parent you know, and then doing it alone as well. It's, it's, it's hard. Uh, it's definitely hard and it, it's, but it makes you stronger. It pushes you through it. You know, it kind of makes me want to keep going, but it, it's hard to maintain and manage, you know, especially at the age he is now, you can't really explain it to them, you know? They yeah. Oh, yeah. So is he in school now or just yeah. all Zoom? Yeah. So basically, thank gosh, uh, LA County down there in uh, Los Alamitos, they uh, are letting them do in the morning where they do virtual learning. And then in the afternoon, they go to school for two or three hours just to get the social interaction, but they have to wear masks and it's not comfortable, you know, and it's, 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 like I said, it's crazy times. It's, it's crazy times. And very, very last question before we end this. Yeah. Hey, um, for someone who was interested and trying jujitsu, right? But yeah. they were nervous. What would your advice be to them? Why are you nervous? Go try it. If, especially if you're an adult, what do you have to be nervous about? You know, it's, you're trying something new. Yeah, it's uncomfortable, but in any situation in life, you're going to be uncomfortable at one point. Huh. So it's all about taking the risks and getting out of your comfort zone. What's there to be embarrassed about? If you don't like it, you go away and you never see the people again, probably. You know, that's the way I kind of think about it. Or you start out not liking it, and then you get into your first match and win, and it's a high for you, and you just never yeah. know. Yeah, you high. never know. You never know. So why not take the risk? All right. I can't thank you enough for everything, you know, for allowing me to do the podcast yeah. with you, um, asking these questions. I know you're busy. It's, you're swamped with a lot of stuff. Um, I just want to thank you again for allowing me to do this. And – I'm making this a point for every guest that I have to pretty much just kind of ask them like, what's their philosophy of life? Like yeah. you can have like a song or a quote or something that's meaningful to you. So what would that be? I would definitely say, so I actually have a tattooed on my arm living for today because tomorrow's never promised. So take it day by day. You know, there's 365 days a year, you know, you have 365 new chances. So definitely. Just take it day by day and keep on keeping on. I love it. All right, Jasmine. Thank you so much. Get some rest. <laughs> Come on top, come on top, come on top. There you go. Protect it. Hit down, hit down, hit down, hit down.